Good afternoon and welcome to Taking Stock, Empower's new video series where we offer first thoughts on leading financial news. I'm Vanessa Welch, Vice President for Financial Insights, and I'm here with Empower's Chief Investment Strategist, Marta Norton. Marta, great to be with you again. Good to be with you, Vanessa. We have just seen the Fed's first interest rate cut in four years, and it is significant, a 50 basis point move. Let's start with the big picture, Marta. How do you think the Fed is assessing the economic landscape right now? What are they seeing to justify this large cut? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot going on here. So let me set some context. So first, if we're going back through kind of modern history with the Fed, going back to say something like 1990, every cutting cycle that we see outside of a crisis tends to begin with a 25 basis point cut or a quarter of a percent. Um, the exceptions to that are the great financial crisis or the tech bubble where the Fed started with 50 basis points. So it's unusual for the Fed to make this large of a cut when we're not actually seeing the economic deterioration that we saw in, in periods like that. A few other unusual elements to this. We had a dissent in this meeting. So typically there's a unanimous agreement across the board on the size of the cut, the size of the hike. Um, but this time we had a dissent. That's the first time since 2005. And then finally, we typically don't see much Fed activity in a meeting prior to a presidential election. So a lot of different elements that, that could raise eyebrows one way or another. But thinking about what this means from an economic picture perspective, the Fed has two mandates. It has inflation and unemployment. And when we, we look at the kind of the language that's coming out of the Fed, there's really been a shift from very much a focus on inflation to today a focus on inflation and the labor market. And perhaps if we're taking a look at uh, projections from the Fed that are saying, and unemployment ticking higher to 4.4% from today's level of 4.2%, maybe a greater emphasis on really containing any issues on the labor market. So economic takeaways, meaning that there's more consideration and concern around the labor market and also some uncertainty as we take a look at what individual um, Fed members are suggesting, there is a little bit more uncertainty on the path ahead. Yeah, and that's important context, Marta. Given the magnitude of this cut with such an aggressive move, how are you expecting the markets to react? Well, I think the markets are really going to like that. We're already seeing that in the early responses. Mm -hmm. So a few things here. One, this is very good for the pivot trade. And when I talk about the pivot trade, I'm talking about moving um, from large cap stocks to small cap stocks. Lower rates are, are positive for small cap stocks, which are a bit more debt dependent than some of these bigger, healthier companies. Um, and they're also more economically sensitive. So if we have lower rates and a soft landing, we're going to start to see that rotation trade have a little bit more uh, momentum. Broadly speaking, equity markets like it when we have a cutting cycle without a recession. So that's another positive at a very broad level. And then within the fixed income market, it is past time to move out of cash in short duration. As those rates at the short end of the curve come down, um, there's fewer opportunities to reinvest at, at, um, at that end of the curve and get that same level of rate. So really shifting out the curve um, is, is some expectation there. And Marta, that raises an important question about next steps. What do you think is the likely path for the Fed from here? Are we looking at more rate cuts? Right. So that's another important element to watch in Fed meetings, not just what is the current decision and how is that message, but also what you know, should we expect in meetings to come? And what we saw from a median expectation standpoint is two more 25 basis point cuts in the meetings in November and December, and then another 100 basis points or 1% um, over the course of 2025. So a real expectation that should things continue to progress as the data has, um, that inflation will continue to fade into uh, memory as, as a problem the Fed has to fight and the labor market continuing to be a, a, a place where the Fed wants to build up some resilience. So that's the expectation, but this is a very data dependent Fed. So we're going to have to take things as they come. Yeah, Fed Chair Powell saying uh, late this afternoon in his news conference, he's going to make these decisions very carefully, meeting by meeting. Our chief investment strategist, Marta Norton, thanks so much for your insights today. We know that you will continue analyzing the impacts of this rate cut as you monitor the markets. And thanks for all of you for joining us for Taking Stock. We'll see you next time. I'm Vanessa Welch. Empower. What's next?